We just saw the first AM4 boards that we've seen thus far for AMD's forthcoming Zen architecture. And the AM4 boards that we saw were hosted by MSI at CES 2017. They were the X370 titanium overclocking board and a B350 mid-range board. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by Thermaltake and their core P3 chassis, which now has a tempered glass alternative. You can find a link in the description below because it serves a good test bench as well. Starting with the X370 Titanium, the main things to point out about this board Im immediately would be the power setup. So if you look near the CPU, there's an eight plus four power pin setup. So that's your traditional EPS 12 volt eight pin, and then an additional four pin, and that is for extra overclocking power. I don't have hard specs for how much power can be driven to the CPU through this board, or how much the CPU might want, because AMD hasn't really told us yet, but it's there if you want it. The other board, the B350, uses just a typical eight pin setup. So this is something special to the Titanium series. If we look at the south of the board, you'll see an extra six pin PCIe header on the motherboard, and that is to provide power to the PCIe slots for graphics overclocking. This is something we've seen in the past. For example, EVGA's X99 Classified also has this setup. And that helps by providing more power, of course, to the GPU. It can take some load off of the PCIe bus as well for power transfer, depending on what's configured and how much overclocking you're trying to do. Walking around the board, this one gets rid of a lot of the sort of less functional features. For example, the RGB LEDs. There are none. That's a good thing. This is an overclocking focused board. They don't care about things like that for this unit. You'd have to look at the Pro Carbon series, which will exist for AM4, but hasn't been shown yet. So, uh, since there are none of these sort of non-functional features, functional features we have include the typical OC button that's located in the bottom right of the board. It can toggle, so you can actually swivel the button and rotate it to use different pre-programmed overclock settings that you program through the software, and that's done through MSI's gaming software as usual. Next to that, your typical power and reset buttons, nothing special there. There's a CMOS reset button on the back if you care about it, and we have some B-roll of the I.O., the rear I.O. You can just look at that and figure out how many different ports there are, and that gives us some early insight as to the lane availability since AMD hasn't given us much, much yet for Zen or for the X370 chipset. The X370 X Power Titanium is either an 8 plus 4 VRM design or 6 plus 2. MSI told us both numbers but you can see b-roll of the VRM for now and we'll look at it more closely with Buildzoid in the future. The X Power Titanium's VRM is capable of handling well over 250 amps from what MSI tells us. Flipping the board over, you'll see in these shots that there's a MUX setup on the back. So this is what would allow, in theory anyway, for the 16 lanes from the CPU to be split off into two by eight. So if you wanted to do multi-GPU setup, these are the chips that would handle it. Kind of like when you look at a PLX PEX chip on any other board that does this type of thing. And I don't have a price for the X Power Titanium motherboard yet. We don't have any prices for anything related to AM4 or Zen, go figure, but uh, it'll be up there. This one will definitely be a more expensive board just by looking at it. You can see the component quality and focus on overclocking does mean it'll be a bit more expensive. The B350 board is the one that's supposed to be cheaper. That's the Tomahawk. So this is another line that exists for MSI. You can find their Tomahawk boards with the Intel 200 series chipsets if you want an idea of how they stack up versus the Pro Carbon and things like that in terms of price. But the Tomahawk is a B350 chipset and it is also more limited in its overclocking endeavors. So one of those examples, the most obvious one, would be the VRM. The VRM for the Tomahawk is a 4 plus 2 setup and that one is about a 200 amp throughput. So I don't know what kind of overclocking will be enabled on B350, but depending on that, it's probably plenty of power. We'll see. I really have to have the chip in hand and tested to tell you. Uh, it seems fine though. Now, other things on the board, I suppose the PCIe slots, uh, below them, you might have noticed that there's PCI slots, two of them, not E, just PCI. So why is that there? Well, it's for, from what MSI tells us, it's emerging markets, which is common. That's something normally like China market uh, would use these serial ports, COM ports, things like that. You'll sometimes find them on new motherboards. The reason is often just because they need to support a wider market than the US, Europe, uh, where they might be using those older devices, whether it's for industrial use or just because they happen to have a lot of them and use them. So 
to that end, not only is PCI on there, but there's also a combo port where you can hook up those legacy printers if you so desired. In terms of things that are relevant for gaming, it's really just a pretty straightforward motherboard. It looks like maybe ideally with one GPU. I'm not sure what the lane setup will be. Uh, the muxing was a bit different versus the titanium, which you would expect. The VRM's a lot simpler. Uh, it does have the reinforced slots, I guess, which on memory, one thing here, you'll notice that these motherboard vendors now are all putting the sort of steel or armor plating on PCIe and on their memory slots. On PCIe, it makes a little bit of sense because if you're an SI and you ship a unit, maybe there's some concern with it falling out, ripping the slot out of the board. More likely what happens is a few people have pulled on the cards too hard without releasing the clip and then they rip the PCIe slot out of the motherboard. More likely still is that it's just marketing, at least to some extent. On the memory, this one is not for reinforcement physically as much as it is just extra grounding points. And that's something we'll talk about more in the future, whether or not it's relevant. Uh, but that's really all we have for you in terms of the two motherboards that MSI had. You can find a link in the description below for more information. And we hopefully will have some more Zen or Ryzen information coming out of this show. So as always, Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. Link in the description below. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.